Hello everyone, this is your seventh Ladybug Comfort Tools tutorial um, and it is the final one in which we'll be really delving deep into the uses of the psychrometric chart. Um, and this one is, is arguably the one that, that I'm the most excited about at least. Uh, in, because we get to now apply the psychrometric chart to an energy simulation and this is where it really starts to take off and you could really use it to, for arguments of say eliminating an HVAC system in your building um, and, and you know in, in that manner saving a bunch of energy and, and potentially costs and, and, and on your project. Um, so, so looking towards this I have an energy simulation fairly simple one set up here with Honeybee um, it's you know it's a five zone simple box mostly just for time constraints you know that you can run anything anything crazy as, as crazy as you want through Honeybee um, but essentially the key things that I'd like to, to point about about the situation the simulation okay we're looking at New York um, and um, and specifically I've put in the ability to to change set points here uh, maybe just move that down a bit um, so this last component sort of ch chooses your set points of your cooling set point and heating set point um, and these can be adjusted and this is where the, you know essentially the lever is for, for, uh, for energy savings essentially. So if you could argue that you can drop the heating set point down or raise the cooling set point up what, what the thermostat is set at that, that will start to give you huge uh, energy savings in, in your model and it's for that reason that so I've requested both zone comfort metrics and energy use in, into, into this simulation. Um, and let's say, all right, let's, so this is a New York simulation. I think, I think it might be worthwhile. So I know personally that I have been okay in many buildings without air conditioning at all, but just as long as I have the window open and a fan on me, I've usually been, been comfortable through entire summers, uh, in, in the, the climate of New York. Um, but, uh, but the thing is now that there's a question of how, how do we, how would we necessarily argue this to an HVAC engineer? Because certainly if, if, uh, if, if occupants complain to the, to the HVAC engineer, he can, he can unfortunately get sued. Uh, and, then, uh, and then he's in a, a bit of a pickle and you're, then you'd be say, but you, you know, I trusted you and, uh, and, and well, okay. Anyway, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll leave the, the sort of the drama to, to, uh, to the side for now. And just, I mean, say, so, all right. So we can argue though that, that certain conditions would be comfortable. And that, for example, I would be comfortable with just a fan um, in, in, the, in the climate of New York. And so we're going to do that this time with, with, uh, with this energy simulation here. So, okay, so I'm just going to, I, now that I, I basically have everything set up, I'm just going to set run it to true. And it's, and it's important to know, I mean, there's no particular ventilation or anything happening in this building. The windows are closed. The, um, um, let's see, the, uh, and, and, uh, and there's no ventilation, no fans or anything to really keep people comfortable except for an, an air conditioning system. And so we're going to, we're going to actually get a sense of what, what the cooling is like for this, this, this climate. Um, just after, I'm going to fast forward through this energy simulation. Okay, so the energy simulation has finished, and we get our values into uh, imported into to Rhino Grasshopper for for heating, cooling, air temperature, and 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 our, our comfort metrics down there. And so let's see. Let's say we only really want to look at at one of the one of the zones here. We don't necessarily need to look at all five. We'll just look at comfort. Maybe say let's see if we could try and find the north zone. And so to select out that, that north zone, we're going to use a tree branch uh, branch. Uh, here we go. We want retrieves all items in a in a specific tree branch, um, and let's let's at least just find out what the cooling and heating is for for say like the north zone. And first, well, let's first be sure that we're we're looking at the the north zone. Um, and usually this this list should be aligned. So this is zone zero is the first one, which probably makes sense. But to actually see what zone zero is, there's a it's a little handy dandy component uh, that I put together here. Uh, that labels labels zones with their uh, with either their names or any of the the attributes. Um, so we can just connect this up to uh, to for, you know the honeybee zones to that there, and uh, and maybe we'll turn the preview off here. We don't necessarily need to see what all those zones zone surfaces are. Um, so zone zero is the core zone. You don't, don't really want that one. Let's let's pick the uh, maybe make a slider from zero to uh, four. I think yeah. So it's five zones. And so let's say maybe we, so we want zone one data for that north zone because it's you know that's the one that's going to be most comfortable in the 
uh, in the summer. And so we can you know, take that as a starting point that maybe uh, I as an occupant would move there. All right, so we've got the cooling for that. Um, and then we can, we can total up that cooling, uh, but we just need to have a separate data component so that we can, uh, we can get just the, just the numbers and separate them from the header. Uh, and then we can use a standard uh, mass addition uh, component. Um, for uh, for for just to add up all the cooling. So together, all right. So that is our cooling load in kilowatt hours for the north zone, and that that seems. I mean, that's a, it's, that's you know sixteen thousand kilowatt hours. That could be that could be quite a lot. Um, so uh, and so I mean, and maybe let's focus on on just bringing down this this cooling value as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to the. Um, uh, I mean, we're focusing on heating. Heating we can do always at a later point. But so now let's see. We want to do the same thing for the the uh, air temperature and and, uh, and and relative humidity, so that we can plug them into the psych chart now. So let's actually we only need to copy I think the control C and control V on the tree branch here, um, and then we can hook up the air temperature to select out. You know, we can check with the panel. Uh, the air temperature for zone one is what it should say up there. Yep. And then and then uh, take out the relative humidity for that zone, and and we're going to plot these values now on the psych chart, um, so that we can see actually what uh, what is going on in this zone and why we get such a such a high cooling cooling load. Um, so all right, so we we take these values. The temperature can be plugged into the dry bulb temperature input of the psych chart. The uh, relative humidity into the relative humidity, and you know what? Actually, it's it's good practice to use the barometric pressure. So that that we can get the barometric pressure by importing an EPW, dragging and dropping that on our canvas. Um, I mean, it's it's this is this is optional, but essentially you you know take that EPW file that we that we ran the simulation with, and and import all the values for that, and so and that brings in our hourly barometric pressure pressure, which we can then uh, go and take and plug into the site chart. Okay, all right, and now all we have to do is run this baby. Um, and let's set that to true. And, uh, and now we should get a site chart that will show us what the, what the, the sort of relative or the, the absolute humidity and temperature are like in this zone throughout the whole year, essentially, thanks to the, the energy simulation that we ran. Um, and uh, okay, give it a second. There it is. All right, so let's switch, it, switch into top view so this is a little bit easier to see. And uh, and okay, yeah, and it's previewing in that usual color. Okay, yeah, those are those are some uh, interesting, uh, somewhat hard to read results. I think I think we're getting a lot of uh, a lot re resulting from the the sort of interference of what's happening in the winter months. So you know, what? I think I think we should just make it easier on ourselves. Uh, I'm sorry if you've already ran the simulation once, but let's just let's just run it within an analysis period because that will that will make it things quicker for us. So you can grab the the ladybug analysis period component and let's look at it for just the the summer. So let's see, we want to run it from uh, maybe from June first. Uh, so we'll make that the from month, and then we want to run it to let's say uh, to the end of September. Um, so that would be two month nine, and then okay. So we'll just we'll just really run it for those three months, and we'll just hook that up again to our analysis period, and we'll rerun the simulation. Uh, and so I'm going to fast forward again. Okay, so the energy simulation finished there, um, but you'll see actually our site chart uh, is went orange, and this is this is a good sort of way of uh, actually good opportunity to show you guys. So most of the components will give you a warning. Which is this little little orange balloon? If something isn't right, and it's telling you essentially that the that the relative and humidity lists are of a different length than the than the barometric pressure list, uh, which makes sense because these lists are only for the hours of the summer, and the barometric pr pressure list is for the whole year. So I think for this case, it's it's fine enough. Just I mean, I'm really I guess we should just select out the same analysis period for the barometric pressure. But in this case, I'm just going to disconnect it. Um, so that we can get our psych chart again, just just in in a normal assumption. I mean, New York is is very close to to see barometric pressure anyway. Okay, so this is looking a bit more. Whoop. Okay, this is looking a bit more like uh, what I'd expect for the summer months uh, in New York. And you can see it's it's actually it's it's mostly falling within our our comfort range. But there are some times where where you have a setback at night, essentially where it, where it's moving outside of that. Um, but we can see, I guess, I mean, as we did uh, before. 
we can see the, the number of hours, the percent of hours that are inside that comfort. And right now, yeah, most of these hours are, are pretty much comfortable. 83%, that's probably what we'd expect for, I mean, I, I guess technically this is, this is an office, I should say. Um, so, so it's, uh, or it's, that's the default honeybee energy simulation. Um, so the thing is probably the, the hours that are not, uh, you know, where it's straying outside of this comfort are actually not really occupied. Um, and so, but the thing is, so, okay, so now this, this relates to this, this energy number up here, uh, which is still, still quite high. Um, and it looks like, yeah, we covered most of the period where, where we are cooling. So, all right, so now let's say, all right, well, maybe, maybe it doesn't need to be uh, this restricted, the way that the energy simulation is run. Maybe we can actually let the set points go higher or lower um, if, say, for example, I, um, I, I have a fan. So, so the thing is now let's put in two wind speeds for, for this, for this to, to illustrate this. So, again, I'm going to drop a panel by hitting quotation mark. And let's see, I will type uh, one value. Let's see, I mean, we'll keep one, one speed of z uh, wind speed of zero. Um, but let's double click in there and hit enter again to, uh, let's see, what, what, what we will try wind speed of one. I think, I think that's pretty reasonable to get with a, a typical uh, fan. Um, and then click outside of that and then right click on the panel, turn it to multi line data. Um, and then, then, then we can go and hook that up to wind speed, and then we'll get two, two essentially comfort uh, polygons out of that. One of which, which accounts for um, uh, having having uh, having the fan, and the other that doesn't. Um, so you can see, okay, yeah, now we actually can cover all this new territory um, if we just allow the occupant to have a fan. Whoops. Okay. Um, and now let's see. Let's try something else as well. We'll try two different uh, clothing levels. Because I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not always gonna be wearing a three-piece suit, even though that's, you know, I, I know it's kind of spiffy to an office. Um, but uh, you know, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I get influenced by the LA culture of uh, that my wonderful girlfriend is, and I don't wear a suit every day. So, uh, so for that case, let's say, all right. So we'll have a one one situation where we look at a clo value of one, which is a three piece suit, and another one where we drop it down to to sorry, not to point zero six. Then it's then I'm like just in my socks. Okay, to point six. Um, and uh, and yeah, and that's probably like a very light, like one layer, uh, nice nice button down shirt, I would say. And so, and so let's take that and plug that into to the clothing level. Um, and you'll see again, our, our polygons will recalculate uh, to, to take into account these two different situations. Um, and our, our comfort range would be much more expanded. And actually we end up with this big gap in between the two, uh, which so, all right, so actually maybe let's provide a third value, which is our kind of like middle, what we do on the other day. So in, in the extreme case, we wear a light shirt and then we turn on a fan. Um, but maybe in, in another case we will, uh, let's see. Well, actually, I'm sorry. First, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna just, just turn this to false for a second so we can put in both values. So maybe we have one case where, uh, where I don't know, I only turn on the, pad, the fan half speed. Uh, and then another case where I wear like a .8. Like maybe I just take my jacket off of my three-piece suit. Um, and then now if we set that to true, then we'll get three comfort polygons which should accurately describe my, you know, more or less my, my range of, of, uh, of comfort that I'm willing to accept for these summer months. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, that will be, you know, it's, it's very much uh, expanded off of the original one, uh, or the original single uh, polygon that we were looking at. And, uh, and we're actually, we're still getting, uh, maybe, we, maybe, all right, maybe we need a, a, a fifth, or sorry, a fourth uh, value here. All right, let's just plug in, all right, maybe fan is on the, well, Again, the false fan is on the lowest speed of you know 0.25, and uh, and we have uh, let's see. I mean, maybe yeah, I'm wearing I don't know. I I just I I I don't know. I guess what that case would be. I don't know. I'm I, maybe I'm uh, uh, just unbuttoned my suit. I guess one one would maybe have a button three piece suit, and the other one is is unbuttoned. So so we have a 0.9 clothing value. Uh, and so, all right, now finally calculating this, we should get at last full range of comfort. Okay, and so, and we can now Boolean these all, all these, these parts together here. Um, so if we do a Boolean toggle, 
and we, we set merge comfort polygons, double click that and set merge comfort polygons to true, we're gonna get just one single comfort polygon that represents all the things that I can do as a human being uh, to make myself comfortable in this, in this, this northern zone. Um, and that should bring in, I mean, instead of the 87% that we, uh, or, oh, actually, sorry, that is the that is what we improved upon from the original 82 or so. But you can see there's this whole extra range. Maybe we don't really need to keep the cooling set point down at this, at this uh, 24, 25 range. Maybe we could actually let it float all the way up to here as long as I turn on a fan and I'm able to, to take off some layers. Uh, and that could go a very long way to, to dropping this down. Um, so all right, so now let's let's get ready. Let's rerun our simulation, and this time we're going to change our cooling set point to something a little bit higher. Uh, maybe let's change it to you know let's say be ambitious. Let's change it to like 20, 27, um, which I think actually is is you know is 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 somewhat somewhat uh, probably what what might actually work in some places in the tropics. And so it's going to rerun the energy simulation, and I'm just going to fast forward through this again. Okay, everybody, the energy simulation finished, and you see our new psychometric chart here has values that are floating up more into this, this new range here, um, you know, that's represented by the, uh, our, what, what we're able to make comfortable. And still, we're getting the same 87 values, the percent of the hours comfortable, but this time, wow, that is a really reduced, from, from the 16,000 uh, that we had before, it's now down to 4,000. We literally, like, cut our cooling load in, we, we cut it into a quarter. I mean, just, just by saying, okay, the occupant has a, has a fan and can take off some layers of clothing. And you can make this argument then to, to say an HVAC engineer to say, well, we can actually let the set point go up to this, to, to this level if we allow people to do this. Um, or, or now, possibly, now let's see, all right, we're so close. Like, I mean, we almost eliminated most of the cooling energy. Can we say that maybe we just can eliminate the, the cooling system altogether um, if, if, we, uh, you know, if we can get this far? Um, and so to do that, let's see, so we're going to need to do one thing first, which is that we'll have to make the building uh, unconditioned. So all right, so now that we're, we're at this point, I'm going to, to uh, just set the simulation to false because we're going to make some changes behind the scenes. Um, and let's say, all right, so let's, let's uh, we have to go all the way back to where we first make the zones from the original building masses. Um, uh, which, you know, and actually I'm going to go back to perspective view because we're working on the zones here again. Um, and we have to set is condition to false. Uh, so, uh, so essentially we're going to make a Boolean toggle um, with, with a value of false and plug that into is conditioned. Um, and then that's going to reapply that then to all the zones. None of the zones now will have any sort of HVAC system in them. But now we, need, we still need some way to cool the building down. So we have to let's let's make a ventilation schedule that's built off of um, off of essentially what we what we uh, uh, maybe let's say the outdoor temperatures. We, so we can easily say anytime the outdoor dry bulb temperature goes above um, let's say 20 20 degrees. Uh, uh, well, no, maybe maybe more like 24. Then then open the windows so that we're not we're not you know sweltering in our own heat. Um, and so to do that, all we need to do is take the dry bulb temperature here and hook it up to a ladybug separate data component. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to separate the, head, the numbers of the, of the temperatures from the, the strings or the, the, the header data. And, uh, and then we can then take in the maths panel, we'll take something that says, okay, anytime we have a value that's larger than, and uh, maybe we want to say larger than, what do we say, 24 Celsius? So anytime the the outdoor temperature goes above 24 Celsius, uh, then then you know give me true values. And so that's not the case in the winter, obviously at first, um, but is the case later on. Um, and so we can easily convert these true false values to integers uh, because an inter whoop, where was just there integer uh, because essentially I mean Boolean values are just you know zeros and ones just like binary and you know and that all that cool stuff and now we can use the honeybee uh, there's a special component here that allows you to create a CSV schedule from a set of values which we'll create from these zeros and ones that's essentially say open the windows or don't open the windows um, and so hook those up to the values there and then all we have to do is set the boolean toggle to true and it will write for us a csv file that can be plugged into energy plus um, in order to to that will that will ventilate our building when it gets too hot and this is the address of that csv file 
So I kind of already anticipated doing this earlier in the demo, so I'm just going to take the CSV file and plug it all the way back here and just to, into this data uh, thing, and I'm going to right click on the data and internalize it. Um, so that so that now I can essentially I can plug this back into the infiltration schedule um, in this com in this component that essentially alters the schedule of the zones um, and so now this is going to in uh, you know it basically increase the the airflow into the building anytime that the the outdoor temperature goes above that that value um, so okay so we've got something that accounts for that and now actually now I mean now that it's not conditioned this component really doesn't mean anything anymore so you know what let's let's just let's just get rid of it because we don't we don't have any set points anymore uh, and we can hook up our HP zones to uh, to this one um, and we don't have was mind you we don't have any set points because we set the uh, you know the building to not be conditioned and we'll plug these in as our new honeybee zones to our energy simulation Ooh, uh, and I forgot one other thing. Uh, so the thing is, we have to actually, yeah, I, I just put it in here uh, after after pausing for a second. Um, but you need to duplicate the these these false values for for uh, whether it is conditioned. If you want, so you essentially need a list of of true false values for each of the zones, or else it's going to apply apply. Uh, you know, it's going to make the, only one of them conditioned. Um, so so we have you know du duplicated values here five just using the grasshopper duplicate component. Um, and so and that ensures that all of the zones are not conditioned now. So now, now, okay, now we're ready to run our simulation and I'm gonna set this to true um, and I'm gonna fast forward for you guys. Okay, so the energy simulation has finished um, and run correctly. Um, however, it seems that maybe the news isn't quite so bright for us. Well, okay, so it seems if we, if our, if our, um, well, well, for one, I guess we don't get any cooling or heating, as as we'd suggest. So this is this is null and void. We have no cooling, but it seems that even with all of our if our our efforts with comfort, there are still seem to be a few values, few maybe. I mean, they're not they're not very frequent. They're all sort of blue meshes, but where we're going to be kind of skyrocketing off the chart, um, possibly because maybe maybe more to do with our internal gain inside of our building, especially with an office. So maybe our dreams of totally cutting out an HVAC system are not really too um, uh, too realistic. Um, but at the least, I've shown you that that we can we can you know I mean it's really only a few hours where this seems to be a problem, and maybe it's enough that that we can get by with it, um, you know without without uh, uh, you know or maybe an engineer would accept this if we could then show that these were mostly unoccupied hours of the office or something of of the like. Um, so, so you can get a sense of the usefulness of how you can use this to, to make arguments and then and then uh, you know make make cases, especially to HVAC engineers, for only having your for having certain set points or only operating at certain times. All right, so thank you guys for watching the psych chart videos, and uh, and I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, and uh, and and thanks again. I'll, I'll there will be many more videos that will be up here um, in the in the future, um, and uh, and I, I hope you enjoy them.